What's going on guys? Recently I made this super cool Minecraft sword. And before I cast it, I want to make a replica that's a basic Minecraft sword. Because I put a lot of work into the other one, and I want to make sure I can cast it before I even attempt it. So I traced the original pattern onto a piece of construction paper. I then applied glue to the back of it, turned it over, and glued it to this polystyrene foam half inch thick. This construction paper is not going to stay on this foam. After doing this and cutting it out, I'll then remove this construction paper. This isn't permanent glue. I'll be using my homemade hot wire cutter to cut out the shape. This cutting actually does take a while, but this is sped up six times. I first cut out the outer part of the pattern and then I did the center by cutting out little holes using a drill and then feeding that wire through and reconnecting it to the hot wire cutter. Again, the speed of this part of the video is sped up six times. Now that the entire foam pattern is cut out, it's now time to easily just peel away of the construction paper that I previously glued to it. I now have a piece of foam that is going to be used for a test pour because it's the same exact shape is my original Minecraft sword that again, I put quite a bit of work into. So now we're gonna start the lost foam casting process. If you're new to my channel, I do this process quite often. It's pretty simple. You just fill the bottom of the container with sand, then you put your foam pattern into the sand and then completely fill the rest of the container up with sand. And this sand, by the way, has to be completely dry it's also a good idea to vibrate the container to get a better compaction of the sand. Because I don't have a container that is the adequate size for today's lost foam casting, I kind of have to adjust. I'm just putting another container on the top of it that I cut the bottom and the top out of it. And this still is not quite high enough. But when you're finished, you put a pouring cup on the top. This is going to contain the molten metal when you pour it in. And now that the lost foam casting mold is finished, I'm gonna to go to my furnace and clean out my crucible before starting. The aluminum is now solidified from my last pour and it is shrunk and now loose and easy to pull out from the crucible so I can start fresh. We're gonna just melt some ingots that I have in my garage from my previous casts. If you look into my past videos, you'll see that I melt things down like beach chairs, car rims, other types of aluminum scrap and I pour them into ingots. People are always asking me, what do I do with my ingots? Well, sometimes I just remelt them to make things. So I'm gonna load the crucible into the furnace, start the propane, and light this furnace. I pulled the mold right out of the garage. I have it on wheels, it was very easy to transport. I just pulled it outside closer to the furnace for when I'm ready to pour. The metal is probably pretty close to melting, so I'm going to put another ingot on the top to preheat it before putting it in. unsure on how much aluminum I'll need, so I'm going to add another ingot. Alright guys, the aluminum is fully molten and it's time to pour. I checked the temperature of the metal with my thermometer and it is 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. I wanted to make sure it was much higher than the melting point of aluminum because I wanted to make sure that I burned out all of the foam so I can have a full cast. As you can see, there's a lot of black smoke and I think that's because I had like two inches of the foam sticking out of the sand that had to burn away. But because of this, I could not see. So I just kept pouring and pouring and pouring, and you could see the aluminum is going all over the place. 
and you can see it's ruining my driveway but this is not the first time this has happened if you look at those other dark black spots in my driveway i have definitely spilled molten aluminum on my driveway before just not anywhere near this much aluminum and of course it got on the wood for this dolly that i used to transport the mold so i'm going to throw some of my dry casting sand that i have here on top of that to try to get rid of this flame because you definitely don't want to use water i kind of think for now on whenever i'm going to be doing any type of lost foam casting i'm going to surround the mold with sand because i kind of don't want to keep doing this to my driveway so i didn't show it but Right after this video, I quickly scooped up that aluminum so it stopped burning my driveway. And you can see it here. It left a mark, but some of my driveway is still intact. This big chunk, that took up part of my driveway. That didn't go as planned. It actually didn't go anywhere near planned. So I don't know. I don't know what happened. I definitely think next time I do this, I'm going to use a different mold contraption because I wasn't really secured with the, uh, the metal drums. I didn't really like that very much. So I think I'm going to work on something else for my next time I do it. But I want to see what happened. It, it really doesn't make any sense. It's like almost instantly the aluminum started overflowing. Obviously, I couldn't see anything because all the black smoke. Um, oh, I don't know, but uh, we're going to wait for this to solidify and then we'll pull it out and see if there's anything in there that might tell me something. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was dangerous, guys. So make sure you wear your proper protective equipment. All right, we're going to give this about 20, 30. Uh, we probably give this about an hour before I pull it out. So stay tuned. I gave it about 25 minutes before I started to remove some of this hardened aluminum on the top of the mold. I figured it would be a lot easier to disassemble this mold without this hard aluminum. It's basically connected to that steel that I had there. So I normally just pull out the cast using a pair of channel locks, but this one actually gave me a lot of resistance, which kind of gave me hope. So I decided to just pull up on this drum and have it expose the cast to see how it came out. And now that the guard is exposed, I should be able to just easily pull out the blade or whatever's left. And to my surprise, this is a complete cast. I really don't understand it. I can't believe that, that worked. I'm besides myself. I definitely underestimated the amount of aluminum it was gonna take to make that. That's so cool. Oh my God. Let's, uh, I'm besides myself. So uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna take a break and then we'll be back. So I just wanted to scrape away some of this loose sand with the wire brush and then quench it in some water. But it really wasn't all that hot. Because, you know, it's been probably an hour by now. But I still can't believe that after all that spilled aluminum, I still have a full sword that I just made out of aluminum. A lot of people always ask me why I coat my foam with gypsum. Well, if you look at the surface finish, it's pretty horrible without it. Also, as you can see, this wasn't a perfect cast. It didn't get the very top. And this is what was left in the pouring cup on the top. It's just a bunch of garbage. And we definitely have to weigh this thing so I know how much aluminum to use for my next cast. And we're going to need 3.22 pounds of aluminum. Guys, that is it for today's video. I do hope you liked the video because I sure like the way this came out. 
And now I know how much this weighs and how much aluminum I'm going to need to cast the good one. Uh, I do need to make some changes on the way I'm going to do it. I'm not really very happy with the container situation that I'm using. And I need to set up some sort of fan so the smoke doesn't blow on my face. Uh, it might be a little while before I do the good one. But when I do, the link to that video will be in the description of this one. So make sure you check that out when that's complete. But guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you want to go even further, you can really support the channel by becoming a member for 99 cents a month, cancel at any time, and you'll get access to new videos earlier than everybody else. All right, guys, stay tuned for my next video.